Please meet in Mr. Murray's room at lunch. Also, um, the, oh yeah, today and tomorrow at lunch there's going to be a candy gram card making in the quad. Um, so if you want to make a candy gram for a friend, then or whatever, you can do that in the quad, and there'll be supplies and paper and that sort of thing. So yeah. So Saturday at 4:30, right here is the Coral Winter Concert. It's winter time. All the choral music, all the choral musicians will be part of that concert. And you're all invited. It's free. It's right here. And on, in connecting with that, music students, please watch your schedule for this week because it's different. Okay? All the call stuff's on Haiku. I have every reason to believe that Dr. Clevin and Mr. Daly have communicated with you the changes. This week is different from every other week, music students. Please be on top of that, top of that schedule. Thank you. Instead of going to the PATH groups, tomorrow we're having a split forum. So the 8th, 9th, and 10th grade will be in here, and the 11th and 12th grade will be in the theater. So there are two different um, kinds of programs going on that the schedule will be posted on the, um, across from Mr. Harmon's <coughs> office on the message board and also um, on the library door. So that will be from 10 to 11, so it's a for, an actual forum schedule. That means you'll lose five minutes from each of your academic classes. So if you have any questions, let me know. And this is Reese and I would like to talk about National Oregon. Yes, because the trip to the Oregon Shakespeare Festival is absolutely on. We can tell you that we will be going from June 9th to the 12th. We'll be staying three nights, we'll be seeing four plays, most likely one musical, Into the Woods, as well as Richard III, The, Sin, the Sign in Sidney Brustein's Window by Lorraine Hansberry, who wrote Raisin in the Sun, and then either The Tempest or Comedy of Errors. So the trip should cost approximately $600 per student. We can't figure that till we know how many students are going. So what we are asking from you all is a check for $100, which is refundable, if you don't go, so that you can hold your place and we can start to make the reservations. Because if we do it now, we can get great seats. And Ashland is beautiful, and we had so much fun last year that we thought we had to do this again. So if you have any questions, come see either one of us, and we'll give you what we have. And once we get a good number, then we'll hold a meeting and get everything organized. Good morning. Welcome back. It's that time of year where we return from a brief but welcome uh, break from academic time and then come back to what might feel like a rather compressed six days of academic classes followed by two days of review before we go into end of semester exams starting on Thursday, December 12th. So just a few words about this week and the coming exam period. While uh, seniors know that first semester grades are important because they are reported to colleges and universities for which they would like to be admitted, um, all other students should keep in mind that first semester exams are used as a diagnostic by teachers to let us know where you are at at this point in the year and we report at first quarter in first quarter comments, a grade for each class, but it's only your end of year grade that is reported on the transcript. So first semester exams are a great time to find out where you're at at this point in the year, to put your best foot forward, to study, and to give us an opportunity to give you some important feedback as to your progress. At the end of today, on the York blog, Facebook, and Haiku, this beautiful color-coded spreadsheet of the exam schedule uh, will be posted with uh, which rooms and which days and which time of day certain exams um, are to be set. And what you want to be doing this week is talking with your teachers about any conflicts that you see. If you have a singleton course that is a conflict um, with another singleton course, 
Um, if you have two courses that have exams at the same time, speak with your teachers about um, how to problem solve that um, so that we can help you. The other thing that will be posted there would be a couple pages of really valuable resources with regards to prepping for exams. Thanks. Study tips and things to help you mitigate stress and anxiety. And we highly recommend that you take that you take a look at that. We'll be reviewing that with you in the in the coming days. There are two techniques from cognitive psychology and recent neuroscience that are particularly beneficial for you. Um, one is what we call distributed practice, and um, the other is what we <coughs> well, let me talk about distributed practice first. Distributed practice basically gets the idea that it's not a value for you in terms of your long-term retention to cram for exams. So we're recommending that you take a look at the exam schedule and that you break up your studying in the coming two weeks so that you are uh, chunking your studying and giving yourself time to review material so that you can aid your uh, long-term retention. Um, the other technique with regards to practice gets to the idea that um, retrie retrieval practice or practice testing can also strengthen your retention. And the best technique from neuroscience right now with regards to retrieval practice is using flashcards. And so there will be some links um, to sites that you, might be available, uh, that you might be aware of, such as Quizlet, where you can build digital flashcards, or you're welcome to build analog flashcards if you'd like to use those to help with your studying. Please speak with all of your individual teachers about any study techniques that they recommend for those uh, individual courses and we're looking forward to um, a great exam period for you at the end of the semester. Thanks. I have loved school my entire life. I went to a small elementary and middle school where I was with the same group of 25 students from kindergarten to eighth grade. I had a lot of fun there, learning new things and spending time with my friends. I was excited to go to school every day, and I was sad to leave after 8th grade. After I graduated, however, I started to get excited about going to a large high school. I found that going from a school with 250 students to the school that I went to last year for my freshman year with 2,500 students was a huge adjustment. I had never had to switch classes before, and I didn't even know how to open a locker. I got a hang of the routine pretty quickly, though, and I soon found that going to my classes in the same order every day was kind of boring. It wasn't that I had any horrible classes or teachers or anything, it was just that school wasn't very interesting anymore. I woke up most mornings not really wanting to go to school, and I was worried that high school would always be that way. Luckily at York, I have not had one boring day. I've already met lots of new people, and I love the rotating schedule, even though it's kind of hard to remember sometimes. All of my classes are very interesting, and my teachers really know how to make learning fun. I'm excited to go to school again, and I'm so happy I got the opportunity to come here. like a Christmas caroling competition in the quad. Thursday's ugly sweater day with dodgeball in the gym at lunch. And then uh, Friday is like holiday day, so like you just wear whatever you have, like red, green, like other colors that have to do with the holiday. And there's gonna be Santa in the quad. Oh. Field hockey girl. I still need your coach's gift money, your senior gift money, and Mallory still needs your shirt money and all the equipment if you still need to turn any of those in. So please turn those in by this week. Woo! Well, we were going to make a work jobs announcement for PATH. Obviously, that isn't going to happen. So, um, but just in general, do your work jobs. Um, even though we made a lot of reminders, there were still a bunch of people who didn't do them last week, especially the trash cans by the lockers. Um, and, the, and the trash cans by the faculty room as well. If you don't know what your work job is, the list is still posted. It's been posted since we've, um, since like a couple of months actually. Um, you probably pass by it every day, multiple times. <laughs> if you don't know what your work job is, it's behind Mr. Harmon's office, like at the little corner of like the business office and like the water fountain. 
So just, if you don't know what it is, um, um, look it up. It's organized in alphabetical order by past, uh, um, past group. So it's pretty easy for you to find your work job. Um, next time we have like normal path, uh, we're probably going to have a little thing about work jobs then, so just be expecting that for next D day. Um, a lot of the supervisors have been doing really well supervising, making sure people actually do things. Keep that up, and the people who didn't do that start doing that. And um, supervisors keep informing us who does and who doesn't do their work job. That's really helpful. Thank you. out the lost and found after finals. So please just look through the lost and found, see if any of your stuff is there. And if it is, please take it. Otherwise, it's going to chair. Again, JSA Bake Sale IOUs. There are still four of you out of the five from last week that still owe me cash. Uh, if you don't get it into me by tomorrow, on Wednesday, it gets raised another bum, 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 50 cents. So please get that into me as soon as possible. Thank you. There's still some IOUs for the root beer float sale, so just turn them into me. Thank you. And keep the IOUs. We still need your money. <laughs>